How are you going? Now, I know that this is going to sound like an Australian cliche, but my family actually has a problem with spiders. <coughs> and the worst part about spiders is one of their favourite places to hide is in your shoes, which also happens to be my feet's favourite place to hide as well. So my family could fix this spider problem by just being normal, hygienic people and properly cleaning up after our food mess, which is the thing attracting insects and spiders. Or, even better, I could introduce a terrifying apex predator to eat the spiders, which makes for a much more interesting and scary video. Wait, where are you going, buddy? I'm a person. Wait, where are you going? Actually, unless you want to watch me tidying up my house for 10 hours. Alrighty, now I have decided to combine two problems in my house together that will hopefully cancel each other out. You see, I have a lizard problem in another area of my property. These guys here have taken up shop in my pond and they eat all my frogs. And I tried solving this lizard problem before in another video by installing a water pump to disturb the water, which I was hoping would trip out the lizards, but that didn't work. And who would have guessed that lizards named Eastern Water Skinks are used to moving water? But I think all we need to do is a simple maths equation. So you've got your lizards plus frogs equals house plus cockroach. All we need to do is minus lizards from both sides. So we get frogs equals house minus lizards plus cockroaches. Then you just you get move the, the cockroaches you times both sides by cockroaches. And then you get, I didn't do maths, but I'm sure the universe will return to an equilibrium. But before I welcome these lizards into my house with bread and salt, I need to work out whether my house is a suitable environment for them to live in. And it turns out lizards are like people. They only need four basic things to live. Food, water, heat, and a place to lay their eggs. The food part is easy to take care of as there is a large abundance of insects and spiders. And unlike me, the lizards aren't scared of catching them. Also, I make a pretty mean micro tuna and mayo sandwich. Water. I don't really have any water sources indoors that are easy for the lizards to access, except a leaky sink, so it looks like I'm not going to fix that for another two years. Heat. When these bad boys live outside, they spend most of their day sunbathing shirtless in the sun, absorbing the heat rays so they have enough energy to eat all my frogs and escape capture. And I have a fair amount of sun in my house, and my house is usually warmer than the outside. But if that isn't enough, I have large electronic devices such as a washing machine or fridge that produce a large amount of heat and a place to hide and lay eggs. And lastly, if the lizards get bored of the living arrangements, I have a lot of leisure activities they can engage in, such as table tennis, a Nintendo Switch, some sneaky booze, and a comfy lounge. And if they still aren't happy with these arrangements, there's a big ass crack under my door so they can leave whenever they want. As my house is overqualified for them to live in, I think it is time for the lizards to pack up their stuff and move in. Now, I do not really have any formal education in catching lizards, so I decided to turn to the folks over at WikiHow and follow their in-depth step-by-step instructions. Step one, locate the lizard. Uh, done. Step two, then grab a stick at least three feet long. Done. Step three. Then sneak up on the lizards by taking off my squeaky shoe and high heel and wear only socks. Step four. Miss the lizard and once it is slowed down from the cold water, guide it into the bucket. None of that worked, and I kind of just made my lizard angry and wet. Also, I'm not sure how f cold you would actually have to make your lizard to grab it, but I don't think the lizard would survive the experience. So, I'm going to put back on my squeaky shoe and high heel and go to plan B, making a bottle trap. So, I'm just going to use the same design as a bottle trap used by the Viet Cong. Just grab a bottle from your family members and cut the top off and tape it backwards. This is how it works. Lizards come in this hole and then they get trapped because it can't climb back out the hole. And this probably won't work, but I'm lazy, so I'm gonna try this first. You know, 
Now that I made this, I realized that I saw a group of teens making similar traps with bottles behind the petrol station, except theirs also used hose. I'm not really sure what animals they are catching though. So I'm gonna be luring the lizards into the trap with a wide array of bugs. I'm using 99% fat-free bugs because I don't really want fat lizards to cramp the style of my house. And in the bugs go, then I'm just gonna place a bottle in the lizards hangout area and then leave it there for a while. Soon enough, the lizards definitely noticed the bugs and wanted to eat them. But this guy couldn't work out how to get in. So either they're idiots or I'm just bad at designing bottle traps. So I figured the lizard couldn't handle the pressure of the camera and decided to leave the bottle trap there overnight. Ah, oh, Tim Tams. <laughs> And in the morning, the weirdest thing happened. It was gone. And I know I make a lot of stupid jokes, but this isn't a joke. It was actually gone. Now, I don't really have any explanation for this. Either a big ass lizard got caught inside and managed to roll away in it, or maybe a cat got at it or something, but I, I don't really know what to do now. Besides move on to plan C, try the same thing again. Also, patrons, if you're wondering what I do with your money, I buy stupid lizard masks on eBay. Thank you. And it finally worked. I managed to catch this little boy and this fatty. Time for them to become a part of the family. First thing I wanted to do was introduce them to their fellow housemates. Welcome to the family. Now, obviously meeting new people is quite a stressful experience, especially when they are giants that scoop you up in a bucket, film you for other giants on the internet, and then place you on a slippery floor. I remember the first time this happened to me, it was terrifying. So I decided to not bother them for a while and put on Bugs Life to get them relaxed and set the scene. Eventually, after a day or two, the lizards became quite accustomed to my house and were engaging in leisure activities like playing piano. Wait, what are you doing on the piano? And working out. The bigger lizards had also snagged the good spots in the house, like under the warm washing machine or under the fridge, areas abundant in food scraps and insects but I still hadn't actually noticed them eating any bugs or spiders. So I decided to give them a little appetizer and get their taste buds warmed up and salivating by using this fishing reel. At first, I tried to make a fake bug to get them excited, but they didn't really care at all. So I decided to use some cockroaches as bait and tying cockroaches to fishing line is much harder than it seems, which probably explains why indoor lizard fishing has never really taken off. Now, I know there's one hiding under the lounge, so I'm gonna cast it gently upstream, making sure to cast with the current, and wiggle it to get the lizard's attention. And bam, I got so excited that I almost forgot that I'm not actually fishing and started to reel him in. They were much more aggressive than I thought they would be, and they managed to snatch and eat the whole appetizer. So I decided to do it again, as I had this cockroach abdomen lying around. And these lizards are big eaters, which is a great sign that they are quite comfortable with their living conditions and hopefully should start eating some spiders soon. Over the period of a couple of weeks, I introduced around five new lizard contestants to the house, all of different sizes and personalities. And I started to notice that the big lizards had become quite territorial and protective of their domain and taken up the best spots, such as under the washing machine. And the little ones had been chased off 
and kicked out and eliminated from the house like a reptilian version of Big Brother. I also think I had noticed a decline in the spider and cockroach population, but that is a very hard thing to measure. And I'm not sure if it is because the lizards actually ate them or the bugs are just camera shy. And then this happened. I was in another room, but ran over when I heard the lizard shouting out wrestling moves and I managed to capture the last moments of this fight when this lizard managed to finish off the cockroach with his famous exoskeleton breaker move and then take it under the fridge for later. And I think I need a couple more months to say it has worked 100%, but it seems as though the introduced lizards do a pretty good job of controlling the insect population in my house. And I don't see why this wouldn't work and continue to work as long as you create a happy environment for the lizards filled with insects, spiders, and tuna sandwiches for them to eat, then the lizards are going to live prosperously and clean your house. Also, hopefully, the lizards are so happy with the living arrangements that they decide to get it on and make some little baby lizards, and your house will be insect-free for eternity. After making this, I realized that there are a lot of areas in the world, such as Southeast Asia or Northern Australia, that already have lizards like geckos as house cleaners. So, if you are from these areas and watch this video with a gecko on the wall next to you, I apologize. This probably wasn't a very entertaining video for you. But yeah, if you do have an insect problem, consider using a reptilian solution instead of nuking your house with poisonous chemicals that make it unlivable for life. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe. Uh, and before you run away to the clickbait on the side over there, here is part one of my original lizard conundrum.